Hello and welcome to another how-to video. My name is Ditech, CTO of DVS here in Cardiff in the UK. So today we're going to take a look at, and thank you for the request, this came from Robert in Hike Vision Australia actually. We're going to take a look at how POS can work through the local GUI on GUI 4 on an iSeries NVR. Now we've done a video on how it can work with Hike Central. A lot of people, including Robert, requested how does the user interact with it locally on the site if you don't want Hike Central, if you just want to use it on a smaller scale. So first, you need to subscribe, then you need to like our channel to keep up to with all the latest content, notify when anything goes live, keep suggesting, commenting, sharing. Don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, so Facebook, LinkedIn, Again, if you've got any requests, let us know. What we're going to do now is uh, show you my setup here. Every till is different. It's very, very difficult to show you the till specific setup because, like I say, there's thousands of different tills, all the different interfaces. So what we've actually done here is I'm going to turn you around. Is just tilt you down. Is using this network assist tool that simulates pause data from a till over the network, so it's hardwired over the network into the same network as my iSeries recorder, which is here, Ta -da! and this is the GUI for NVR screen. So give myself a little wave, there we go, hello, good morning. Uh, let's tilt you up so you can see the screen a little better. So you should have the whole NVR GUI screen in there, fantastic, let's begin. So what we first do is to set the um, pause up, so take it that the till is already set up on the network and live. What we're gonna do now is take the wireless mouse. Fantastic invention, wireless mice. So, we're gonna go firstly into system and then go into the POS function here. Right, so we're gonna use camera two. I've already set it up, it's looking at us, so it's nice and easy for the pause over later to be uh, shown. So we're gonna select camera two. We can support this function on up to 16 cameras, so you can choose any camera. Normally, that camera would be looking at the till. So take it that the till is here in front of us. So what we're gonna do now is under each camera, you've got the edit options there. You can do it from the top or you can do it from each camera. So we're gonna choose edit. So what you need to do first is enable it. By default, all the pause functionality is disabled. So we're gonna en enable it. You've got different POS protocols, Epson, Universal, AVE, and Nucleus. Most people will try and communicate over the Epson protocol. It seems the most uh, common one that we use in the UK especially. I don't know about you guys globally, but Epson in the UK is a big protocol. We can use AVE, Nucleus, or even Universal protocol. Universal protocol is almost like a raw listener. So it takes that raw data over the network or direct serial connection and tries to translate it into POS. Try Epson first, if not, go to Universal Protocol. I'm gonna use the Epson Protocol. This uh, software we're using as a till seems to push out the right protocol that translates into Epson. So we'll stick with Epson. So your pause name, so you've got your one to 16 channels there, as we described, so we're on channel two. Uh, and in fact, I just clicked the wrong button. Uh, go back in there. So we've enabled it, you've got connection mode. TCP, UDP, multicast, sniff, USB to RS-232 or RS-232. If you're a direct connection off the till, so 2v2 direct off the till into the back of the DVR NVR, it's RS-232. USB to RS-232, we do a USB to a four-way adapter. Really not recommended, but we do do that. Most people use the TCP or you can use UDP, multicast or sniff. Now, we're gonna use TCP, that, I know that works, that's the most common one we find works, but depending on your setup and how you're interacting on your network, will be de dependent on the connection mode. So we'll leave that as TCP. Then you've got the parameters. Clicking on parameters will show you the port that you want your till to communicate on. So your till needs to communicate on that port, they need to match, and that's the IP address of your till. So my uh, till here, which I showed you at the beginning, matches this IP address. So that already works, that's lovely. This box, you move it around and drag it, etc. This will, sh will be to show the pause text will be within this screen. So you can move that anywhere within the screen and adjust the size. And that's where the pause text will be overlaid. So channel linkage and display. So you've got the channel options there. So we're gonna select two, we're already on two. You've got different character encoding, but we're only on Latin one because um, of the connection mode type we're using. You've got overlay mode, is page or scroll. Now I'm gonna leave it on page. If you put it on, so every line, will, every 
time in a transaction comes in, it'll do a new line, which is quite easy to, for us to read and understand as a human. If you're more intelligent, you can put it as scroll, but it scrolls along to the edge of the box and creates a new line. So it really is up to you how you want it to be presented. I prefer the page option. And again, the same with the font size, you've got large, medium or small. I choose medium and then you've got the font color. So for test purposes, we're gonna use red. It shows up quite nicely on this green background. Display for five seconds and then time out after five seconds. So that's uh, how long you want it to stay on for and then how long do you, how long do you want that trans transaction to be on the page for and then when no transactions, they'll disappear after five seconds. Then you've got the privacy settings. So it's for the card number, so it'll stamp out XXX over the privacy settings. So if you don't want that to be shown in the transaction, uh, that'll be sort of uh, down to your local laws, I assume. In the UK, we would probably blank that out. Um, and then you've got overlay pause in live view. So if you want to be able to see this in live view on the local screen, you need to enable that option. If you're only interested in seeing it on playback and you don't want anyone to see it in the live view screen, leave that unticked. So we're gonna then tick apply. So it, all those parameters are saved. I'm in schedule 24 seven default. And then the event linkage. If you've got um, things that you want to trigger like a, key, a keyword alarm or something you can set up the linkage actions like full screen monitoring when a pause event comes in um, maybe a specific till if that comes in you want it to be full screen alert because somebody's logged on to the till you can do that through the event linkage and um, that's pretty much the setup so it's nice and easy to do actually locally on the thing so you can either do this through the local GUI the setup or through the IMS 4200 the web browser doesn't currently support the pause setup so hopefully everyone is okay with this setup. If you need to shout, shout now, otherwise we're gonna move on. Move on! Brilliant. Okay, so we're on the live screen now. You can see, ignore the camera filming, you filming, me filming, everything. So, big shout out to Verassi in the corner. If you get Verassi in your country, please use it. What an amazing bit of kit. So seriously, fantastic equipment. So big shout out to Rassi while we're here. So we're on the main screen of the GUI now. We've enabled the live view in pause. So I'm gonna send some information through just from my till and you'll see what I mean by the pause text coming on the screen. And every time I hit, and let's put some, Pound. So you start to get all the text coming through and I can't spell, that's bad. Um, and uh, uh, age check. So you can start making these, um, so as, as the tail interacts, so say that's where the writing is there. If I show you what it looks like when we go to small writing, bear with me, I know I'm bumbling. Let's make that box smaller, drag it down to there, make it wider, and we'll make the text smaller, click apply, click live view. Now if we, uh, PSL. So you can see it actually alters the size and where I put the location, and every time I hit that, it'll come through there. There you go, so you get the idea of how the pause now interacts with that. If I zoom that in more there, you can get a better look. If I hit, every time I hit something on the till, or I type in numbers. That could be card numbers, you can see there. Or it can just be a load of numbers. So it could be, you know, whatever that information is from your till. Every till is different and the way it does that so let me zoom back out so you get a full effect so now you understand how that works in live you don't have to have it on live if you don't want it for privacy but i've enabled it for ease of showing you so what do we do next if you want to go and play back the footage with a pause that's very very easy okay so you can see there we're now in playback mode you can see the event down the bottom there so the red tags uh, are where the event is coming if i press play you'll see the text actually come up on the screen.
and scroll through to where there's more text. And that's my phone. There we go, there's more text and you can see if I go to the next event down there, that's where we adjusted the text font size. So that'll skip to that with that footage on there. So it's quite easy to find that footage there. I say it is very, very simple. And then you can disable the pause overlay text. If you don't want the text on there, for privacy reasons, you're playing it back and you're just looking at um, other information by disabling the pause text down there. And then if I enable it, any information that was there will come through. There we go. So again, very, very simple to do. And there is a, a search functionality on there as well for if you want to look for a specific footage that matches it. So I'll just show you that function quickly. Okay, so to do any uh, custom search where you can actually search specifically for the pause event, bottom left hand corner you've got custom search. If you're not, if you know, you can either do it by the timeline or click on custom search, drop down box, event type is pause search, although you can search for actually any event that the recorder supports in there. So we'll choose pause event. You can leave the keyword default, click search, we're only searching for today, click search, and it'll search for all of those events, pause events that we've had come through today, or you can have them in the list, it's up to you. Um, what you can do then is if you want to use the keyword search, we'll type in age, so you can search up to three keywords, case sensitive or not, and then you've got any or all of. So any is uh, any of these or, or all of is all three combined. So you can really narrow it down and you can choose, again, the uh, custom time, click search, and it'll show you the ones with that specific search criteria has been met. Um, then from there, obviously, you can export it as normal. So highlight the ones you want to export click export and job done. So that footage will go straight to a USB stick, use the VS player, then to play it back with the pause text on there. So nice and simple, it really does work. So hopefully, I'm gonna put you back like this now. Ba -ba -ba. Hopefully you found that educational, you find it useful, and thanks again for the recommendation. We'll see you next week for another how-to video. Don't forget to follow, like us, and subscribe to all our social media platforms. See you soon, take care, have a lovely day.